We are doing our polar refresher. And I usually, I've done this different ways over the years. Um, I used to just give this information to students and let them do it on their own during the, our winter break. I found that less than successful <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, so this year we have time to spend a few days before our winter break to go over this. I will tell you that we hit our polar, we hit um, what we do in calculus, we hit polars in unit 10. So we just finished unit eight um, at this time and unit nine is a lot of, a lot more um, antiderivatives integration. And then in unit 10, we get polars and we get um, parametrics which is like motion along a curve. So that's where we're gonna see this. So it'll be in the second half of January that we see this. Now, some of what we're gonna go over with this refresher, um, you may not remember exactly when we get to unit 10. So we'll spend, you know, I won't spend too much time at all in unit 10 going over this detailed stuff. But I'll give you little reminders as we go. I'll ask you how to graph things and so forth, okay? So what this packet has in it is a refresher of some of the things that you did with this material in pre-calculus. So let's take a look at it. We're very used to plotting points in the rectangular coordinate system. Um, points are in x, y, where x is right or left and y is up or down. So we can easily plot points. We, we have been doing that for years now, right? In the polar coordinate system, the ordered, we still have ordered pairs, but instead of an X and a Y, the first, the first number, the first coordinate in the ordered pair represents R, which is radius, okay, which is radius. Think of it as you're going away from the pole, where you're going away from the origin this far, okay. Theta is the angle that you're going away, where the what we think of as the positive x-axis this is zero radian this is zero degrees or radians so right here theta is zero okay um, we will almost exclusively use radians it's calculus so we are used to radians but you should definitely be able to convert from radians to um, degrees because um, a lot of the sciences use degrees so keep that in mind as well Okay, so starting off just plotting a few points, zero, zero is the origin or the pole, okay? I have seen AP use almost exclusively, they still call it the origin on the AP exam, okay? Um, you'll hear me sometimes call it the pole, but it is also the origin, so either one, either one, that's zero, zero. To get to the point three, pi over three, I always go to the angle first. So I will go to pi over three first. This is pi over three. So I'm starting here and going pi over three units, or pi over three radians around this circle. And then I go this far away from the pole. So I'm at pi over three and I go one, two, three. There's my point B, okay? For five pi over six, from zero, go five pi over six away. That'll be right here. And then I go four units away from the pole, which will be out here. Seven pi over six, go around to seven pi over six. Two units away from the pole will be right there, and so forth. Seven pi over four would be all the way around to seven pi over four, right here. One unit from the pole, from the pole or origin is right here. Okay. Theta can also be negative, and theta can keep going around the circle again and again. So every one of these points can be written in many, many, many different ways. Okay. So if I were going, uh, let's take a look at point B here. There's point B that we graphed. If I went to 7 pi over 3, well 7 pi over 3 is 2 pi plus pi over three, right? So if I go around two pi and then go up to uh, seven pi over three, I'd be back here on the same line. And going up three or out three would be right here again. 
negative 5 pi over 3. A negative angle will go in the clockwise direction. So, and I need to go around 5 pi over 3 from here backwards. So 5 pi over 3 would be, okay, here's 3 pi over 3, there's 4 pi over 3, and so 5 pi over 3 would be back here. And then out 3 again. Furthermore, R can be negative. R can be negative. So if I go to 4 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 would be around here. There's 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 is right here. So there's 4 pi over 3. If I go negative 3, that means here I am on this line and I want to go a negative 3 unit. So I'll go backwards 3 units and I'm back there at B and so forth. So there are, a, there are an infinite number of ways to name any point, okay? All right, so there's a way to relate the Cartesian coordinate system with the polar system. If we lay these on top of each other, any point can be written as an xy point or as an r theta point, right? So let's relate these two. Let's see how these, um, these relate to each other. So um, if, if I draw this little triangle here, this point xy, that would mean that this distance here is x and this distance is y. r is the radius, it's the distance from the origin to that point. Theta is this angle. Okay, so using this we can write each of these components in terms of the other system's components. So cosine of theta, cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so katoa. So a cosine of theta is x over r, which means if we solve that for x, we would get x is equal to r cosine theta. We need to know that. Okay, x is r cosine theta. I always think x and cosine, they go together, okay? Sine of theta is y, uh, is opposite over hypotenuse, so y over r. So y is r sine theta. Again, we need to know that. And I always think y and sine go together. Tangent of theta is y over x. So that means if I solve this for theta, theta will be inverse tangent of y over x. Okay, that's something good to know as well. We don't use it as often, but we do use it. And then we need a way to relate r with x's and y's. So r squared, using just the Pythagorean theorem, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I need you to know all of these things. Okay, it's easy to get there. So I don't memorize them. I, I do have these memorized just because of frequent use, right? But I need you to be able to grab those out of your memory banks whenever we need to. Okay. Graphing polar equations. Um, you need to know how to graph polar equations by hand and with a graphing calculator, okay? As we know, polar equations make some incredible looking graphs. Um, okay, it is important for you to know the forms of several graphs, okay, and be able to recognize a graph without a calculator because you will have some of these without a calculator on the AP exam. There are four types that I want you to know how to graph. Circles, roses, cardioids, and limosomes, okay, and those probably sound familiar. Hopefully they at least sound familiar to you. I know you know what a circle is, but I'm hoping that you remember doing those in pre-calculus. But that's what this review is for, okay? Most importantly, here's what we're going to need to know. Um, we're going to need to know what range of theta values form a complete graph, okay? And that's not hard because Odd petal of these, of these, odd petaled roses form a complete graph in zero to pi. 
all the others form a complete graph in 0 to 2 pi. Okay? We are also going to need to know how to find the value of r when theta is 0. Okay? It's not hard to do, but I need you to be able to do that. And um, as with any equation, you can know that you can always plot a few points by hand to help you um, help you make a graph. Instead of x, y, your chart will be in r theta, where you'll probably be putting different values in for theta, and then finding the r the r's. Okay. Okay. Um, first up circles. So here are the forms of these, pol these are polar equations which all of these, all three of these form a circle. Okay, R is equal to a number is a circle centered at the origin with radius absolute value of A. So grab your calculator. If you need to pause this, pause it, but grab your calculator and let's take a look at this. If we're graphing up, if we have to graph a polar equation, and I will tell you that when we're doing the calculus and polar equations, we are not, we are very likely not going to be graphing a polar equation there, okay? But while we're exploring these again and refreshing yourselves with them, I think the calculator is valuable. So go to your mode and then go down to polar mode. So, and hit enter on that. And now when you go to y equals, instead of a y equals, you have r equals, okay? Um, I will explain that in just a second, but I want to, I didn't realize it was still set on that one. Anyway, that's okay. So if we just go to r is equal to a number, maybe two, r is equal to a number, and we hit, um, I think I'm just going to do zoom four. That's just a circle centered at the origin with radius 2, right? So that's not shocking. It shouldn't be shocking. So I, I do like to do this. On your r equals, go to where it has that line. Go to where you can change that line. If you have some of the graphing calculators, you just hit enter here. On this one, I hit enter, and it gives me a choice. I just want to come down to the line choice and I'm going to do the, I like to call this the bouncing ball. It's the bouncing ball, or the, it's not bouncing, it's just the ball. And you'll see what, what it does here in a second. But on mine I can change the color, but on lots of them you cannot change the color and that's okay. Color, it doesn't matter. So now when I hit enter, you can see what it's doing. And I like this, this is valuable and I'll tell you why. I know I do know from looking at this where my graph is all the time as it's graphing, okay? That's going to be important because when we're doing this with graph with um, calculus and polars, we're going to be finding areas inside of here, okay? We're going to be finding intersection points and areas and stuff, so we're going to have an integral. We're going to have an integral from some theta value to some theta value. And those theta values are going to be important. Okay? I, um, if I wanted to find the area in the first quadrant, I would need to go from theta 0 to theta pi over 2 in this case. Because from 0 to pi over 2, that's where I'm stopping. So if I went from 0 to pi over 2, I should just get that first little quadrant. Okay? And then I'll talk about what goes here later, but this will be a d theta when we're doing areas. Okay? All right, so that's important, and that's why I set up here no, get comfortable with your theta values. Okay? Get comfortable, know what that, know at any theta value where you're at. Okay? So in this one, in this one, the um, the theta values that form a complete graph are zero to two pi. So theta to two pi is a complete graph. That's because this type of graph is not a one-petaled rose. 
an odd pot, uh, it's not an odd petaled rose. It's just a circle centered at the origin. Okay, so it's it's over here and it forms a complete graph in zero to two pi. For these two, let's see what these do. Okay, so for this one, let's make it two cosine of theta. When you hit the X button here, you'll get theta instead of X because we're in polar mode. So now when I hit graph, let's see what it does. It is a circle. The radius is no longer two though. The radius of the circle is one. And look where it's going. It's going around the circle twice. I don't want it to go around the circle twice. You're never gonna want that. So on your window, Instead of going from 0 to, pi, to 2 pi, we'll just need to go from 0 to pi for this one. Okay, 0 to pi forms a complete graph. Okay. That's because this, I think of this as a one petaled rose. One is odd, so it's an odd petaled rose. Okay, so that is an odd petaled rose. Um, if we go and do a similar one for sine, let's see where that goes. Actually, before we do that, let's do, um, let me clear that out. Let's go up here and let's insert a negative. Let's insert a negative and see what that does. See what difference it, uh, it makes. So again, be I want you to become familiar with how these types of things are graphed. So the negative two, the negative two made it flip on the other side of the y-axis where the x's are negative. When I see cosine, I think x-axis. Okay. When I see sine, I think y-axis. So this is a circle or a one petaled rose on the x-axis. If A is positive, it'll be on the positive x-axis. If A is negative, it'll be on the negative x-axis. For sine, and this won't be a shock to you, but for sine, it'll be on the y-axis. If A is positive, it'll be on the positive y-axis, and if A is negative, it'll be on the negative y-axis. Okay, all righty. So let's see, um, let's try to graph these. Um, let's try to graph these without a calculator, okay? So let's see, where would this be? This number gives kind of the length of the petal or the diameter, okay? We're at cosine, so we should be out on the positive x-axis and we go out three units. That's the length of the circle, and it also goes through the origin, so this circle looks something like that. Whoops, kind of got away from me there. Okay, something like that, where the diameter is three. Okay. All right, and this one, of course, this is a zero to two pi. Forms the complete, I'm sorry, zero to pi. It's a one petaled rose. So zero to pi forms a complete graph, okay? All right, another way, if you just forget what these look like, go ahead and put, put zero, make a little sign chart, um, theta and r. If theta is zero, if theta is zero, cosine of zero is one, r is three. So that would be this point right here. Um, at pi over four, Cosine of pi over, well, let's not do pi over four. Let's do pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is a half, and a half times three is three halves. So at pi over three, we're at three halves, or one and a half. It makes sense. At pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so we're right here. So it goes this way, okay? So you can always plot points but it's going to be tedious if you have to plot points for every graph. Get to know these. R equals negative 4 cosine theta would be on the negative x-axis, 
four units out. One, two, three, four. And this would be looking like that. Something like that. Three sine theta, positive y axis, three units out, goes to the origin, like that. Um, and by the way, when we start out, r at zero, when sine, is, when theta is zero, sine of zero is zero, so r at zero is zero. So we are starting here. Okay. And negative 2 sine theta would be down on the negative x, a uh, negative y axis, 2 units out, diameter 2, radius 1. All right, so that takes care of circles. So we're done circles. Okay. Let's take a look at roses. So roses is a more complicated circle, okay? Or a circle is a very basic rose. A, a circle, like we just did, is a one-petaled rose. These are going to be more than one petal if we have a, a number other than one right there for n, okay? So this is a very similar format to that circle that we just did, except Theta now has a coefficient other than one. Okay, so these are roses. Okay, let's let's do a little let's do a little test. Let's graph this one. Let's graph this one. So let's see. We have three cosine of two theta. Three cosine of two theta. And we see how it graphs. Well, I see a rose forming. It looks more like a daisy. For some reason, they called it a rose. Okay, and it stopped. Does that look like it's a complete graph? No, it's not because I'm still on zero to pi. To form a complete graph, we must go from zero to two pi because this is not an odd petaled rose. This is an even petaled rose, even numbered petaled rose. Alrighty. And by the way, on your graphs, if you feel like it's graphing it too fast, your theta step is probably too large. If I make this, if I make this point one, it's going to graph it a lot faster than it is when it, than it was. A lot faster. Okay. So you may want to speed it up, and that's fine. If you make this too large, though, you're not going to get a very good picture of what's happening with the graph. Okay? So play with it and find a sweet spot for yourself. But I kind of like to slow it down a little bit. That might be a little bit too slow. But I do kind of like to slow it down. Oops, that would be too slow. That might be good for me. So anyway, so that is an, an even petal rose. There are going to be four petals. There are four petals here. So you probably remember now, when this number is even, when that number is even, we're going to have double that number rose petals, double that number petals. Each petal will be three, a length of three. Okay. What does making this a negative do? Well, let's find out. What does that insert a negative? So this was like this. And we see that the resulting graph is identical to the one that was positive, had a positive number there. So the resulting graph is identical. What was different about it was the way it graphed. This one started here. This one is going to start over here. Okay? But the resulting graph will be the same. Okay? So um, that's if you have an even petaled rose. So this should have eight petals. 
delete five, and I'm gonna make that a four. This should have eight petals. And I'm going a little bit off the screen, but that's okay. I want you to notice something else about how it's graphing. When it graphs, it doesn't it doesn't draw the flower like you might draw a flower if you were drawing it on your picture on, like if you were making a picture. If I was making a picture of a flower, I'd probably go like this. Right? I don't know what happened to that petal, but whatever. I'd probably do that. That is not how these that how these are graphed. These aren't these when it's graphed, there's not any like bouncing thing going on. Okay, it doesn't come here and then bounce and go back out and bounce and go back out. It doesn't do that. How does it graph it? Um, let me change this to a, a four again. It's very smooth. It's very smooth. There's no bouncing. What I'm getting at is there are no cusps. All right, there's not a cusp. These are going to be differentiable all over the place, okay? So don't think of these as being like, in, you know, I want you to know how it's graphed. I want you to know, I want you to know what the graph is and kind of the way it's graphed, okay? So it is important to, to know that this is not going to bounce and come back up. It, it starts and goes around and very smoothly. Okay, very smoothly. Okay, so there we go. So uh, you can draw it here if you want to, but um, this should have 12 petals. That should have 12 petals, so you can play around with that. And the more petals you have, the quicker it seems to graph because it's still just going through 0 to 2 pi. So each of these is going to take the same number, of, the same amount of time to graph. Okay, so there's the 12 petals. Whoops, off my screen. 12 petals there. All right, so even, co even theta coefficient in this form, even theta coefficient means you have double that many petals. Okay, we need 0 to 2 pi for a complete graph. Okay, and you can always find out where it starts by putting 0 in for theta. Okay. Another thing that I hope you noticed on here is that for cosine, one petal was always on the x-axis somewhere. Okay, one petal was always on the x-axis. Um, whether we have a two here, or a four there, or a six there, or whatever, if it's an even pet numbered petaled rose and it's cosine, you're going to have petals on the x-axis. You also notice that there's a petal on the y-axis, right? That was when, theta, when the theta coefficient was 2. So when the theta coefficient was 4, we're also going to have petals on the axes. If it's a cosine, cosine, even petals, petals on the axes. I don't know if that's something that you necessarily have to know, seriously but I think it's nice to know because if it's a sine then, if it's a sine instead of a cosine and it's an even numbered petals, even numbered petals, then should you be on an axis? No. If this is a sine, let's go ahead and do what you have here. If it's a sine, you're going to find in an even numbered uh, petal rose, sign will not be on any axis, no axis. Still very nice and smooth. Okay, looks like a nice butterfly. Okay, if it's a negative, you'll get the same resulting graph, it'll just do it in a different order. Okay. I'll let you finish that. So if n is even, a complete graph is formed in 0 to 2 pi. Since it is not an odd petaled rose, it's an even petaled rose. If n is odd, 
you really and truly only need to know that the rose has that many petals, okay? And a complete graph is formed in zero to pi since it is an odd numbered petaled rose, okay? If it's a cosine, it'll be on the x-axis. One petal will be on the x-axis. If there's a negative out here, that one petal will be on the negative side. If this is an even, uh, um, a positive number, that petal will be on the positive side. But you don't have to know that, okay? You really don't. For 5 sine of 3 theta, we have 3 petals, 3 petals, each petal is 5. And really and truly, that's all you need to know for those, okay? All right. Next up, cardioids. How are we doing on time? Golly Moses. Like I said, we're going to be spending about two days, two, actually two and a half days um, on this in class. Okay? So I'll be doing a lot of pausing and letting people play with their calculator and stuff in class. All right. For a cardioid. For a cardioid, this is the form of the equation. Okay? This is the form of the equation. And A and B have the same absolute value. Okay, so so how does this equation differ from what we had before? Well, with the roses, we have the form a cosine n theta, or a cosine I'm sorry sine <laughs> sine n theta. So that's a rose. Okay. Um, that's a rose, so this has obviously a number being added to something like that. Okay, so A and B are both numbers. All right, so a cardioid, um, think, I think of it as heart shape cardioid, cardio, that has that heart prefix kind of thing going on. Not sure, maybe Latin, I don't know, anyway, whatever. Um, cardioids are kind of heart shaped, and cardioids when these two numbers have the same absolute value, they always go through the origin or pull. Okay? When you draw your cardioids, please draw them nice and plump. Okay? Some people really like to draw these like with this kind of pointy thing going on. They like it to be like a cute heart. Don't make it a cute heart. Okay? When you draw them, make them nice and plump. Okay. Um, there should not be like a cusp right there. That's bad. That would be misleading. Okay. And I will tell you, we're going to be drawing like other things through here and stuff. And if you draw it wrong, you're we're going to have to find these intersection points. And if you draw it wrong, it's going to be really misleading. You're going to think the intersection points are up here when actually they should be way lower. And you're going to think you're doing something wrong in the problem. So if you draw it nice and plump, it'll be helpful to you. Okay? All right. So here's what my thought is when I see this equation. When I see that equation, I think I see a sign. Well, first of all, I recognize that it's a cardioid cardioid. And then I think sine and a positive sine. Positive sine, so I'm thinking out on the positive y-axis. Okay, And I go out 2 plus 2 units. 4 units. And that's my greatest distance from the origin. Okay, Then I go side to side this many units. Side to side that many units. And then through the pole, so I have another point here. Okay, so then I then I graph it, nice and plump. Okay. So for this one, for this one, I'm thinking positive sine. So I'm going to go out on the positive y-axis, six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six units. Side to side this number. Side to side that number. And through the pole. 
So my cardioid, my nice and plump cardioid, will look something like this. It'll be better to do it too plump than too skinny, all right? But try to make it smooth. And, and again, nobody's going to be looking at your graphs, so you don't have to impress anybody, all right? Um, don't worry if you can't draw them well. It's just for yourself. It's going to help you, all right? So keep that in mind. If Let's confirm that on our calculator. So 3 plus 3 sine theta. Yeah, it's going off my graph because I'm not all the way up there to 6, but there we go. Okay, so this was the first one that we've seen so far that did have a little cusp in it, right? It does have a little cusp right there, right? Okay, here's what I think when I see this one. I see a negative cosine. Negative cosine, so I'm out on the negative x-axis. Cosine and x, cosine and x. So negative x-axis, and I'm going to go out four units. One, two, three, four. Side to side, that number. Side to side, that number. Through the origin, because it's a cardioid, and nice and plump. Let's check it and confirm it. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be right. Okay. Alrighty. What about this one? Okay. I see a negative sign. I'm only looking at the negative, the, the sign in front of my trig function. Negative sign will be down here on the negative y-axis. And I'm going to go out 8 units. So let's, let's just say that that's 8. Okay, Side to side 4. Through the origin. And then try to draw it nice and plump. And you can confirm it on your calculator. Okay, negative cosine, negative cosine, so negative x axis. Out one plus one units, so out two units. Side to side one through the origin, nice and plump. So it would be nice if you could really whip these out quickly, okay, without a calculator, okay? All right, on these, I am not sure why I left this space. I don't know why I left that space on your paper. Um, I think I wanted each page to be a one-page thing. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, notice that the number in front of the theta on these, the number in front of theta has got to be a 1. Okay, the coefficient of theta has got to be a 1. If it's not a 1, if it's not a 1, you get a completely different graph. Okay, so this is the graph of, let's say that we have um, 3 plus 3 cosine of 5 theta. It looks kind of like a mixture between a rose and a a cardioid, right? When you graph it, you get an odd little graph. And remember how I told you that we have we we don't get these bouncing things going on? Well look what happens to this one. We definitely are bouncing. Okay, and notice that this this pedal goes a little bit over the y axis, doesn't it? Goes a little bit over the y axis up on top and bottom. So what would it do if we change that to a 3? I don't know. Let's find out. We did change it to a 3. We get this thing. So it looks more like a 3-petaled rose than it does a cardioid, right? But it's not a 3-petaled rose because roses don't go like over the 
the axes like this. Okay? You do not have to know what these things look like. If you, if you, um, you might have something like this in a problem, but you don't have to know what a graph looks like. Okay? So all I need you to know is the graphs that you learned in pre-cal. So that takes care of cardioids. Okay? Now let's go to lemosomes. Lemosomes are a French word. So there probably needs to be some kind of, a, I don't know, gra uh, grammar things on maybe the O or the A. I don't know. Um, this is how it's spelled in the textbook, so that's what I wrote. But I know that it's French, so you need to say it with kind of a snappy French accent, like les maçons. Okay? We kind of have fun with that in the classroom. Anyway. All right. The equations for lemosomes look very similar to the equation of a cardioid. Very similar. Only this time, the A and the B do not have the same absolute value. So there's going to be different numbers here, different absolute values of those numbers. Okay? So there are two kinds of lemosomes. Lemosomes with a loop, without a loop and lemosomes with a loop. Okay. Um, here's how I tell the difference. When A is littler than B, so I think when A is littler than B, we have a little loop. A is little, you have a little loop. That's how I think of it. If A is big, you do not have a little loop. Okay, um, and you go, not only do you not have a little loop, but you go outside the, the um, origin. So when A is big, no, no loop, and outside the origin, gosh, I can't spell today, origin, okay, all right. Each of these, again, will be 0 to 2 pi, because it's not an odd petal rose. All right. Um, okay, let's take a look at this example. So it's a lemosome. 3 is bigger than 2. Okay. First thing I see is the positive sign, though. Positive sign, so outside, so um, up on the positive y-axis, 5 units. Five units. Side to side that number. Side to side that number. Since 3 is bigger than 2, we do not go through the pole. We go outside the pole. How far? 3 minus 2 units. So 1 unit. So side to side 3. Outside the pole, 1 and then draw it nice and plump. Okay? So let's try this one. All right, first of all, recognize that it's a lemosome. Okay, positive sign. So I'm gonna go up on the positive y-axis, three plus one, there's a one here, right? Three plus one unit, so four units. Side to side, three. Three is bigger than one, so outside the pole, two units. And then we draw it nice and plump. Sometimes, sometimes there's a dimple, and sometimes there's not. I don't care, and it won't matter how you draw that, okay? I just kind of want you to know where it's at, okay? Let's see, though, if this does have a dimple. I'm curious. 3 plus 1 sine, sorry, 3 plus sine theta. Let's see if it has a dimple or not. Not really. 
it looks like it just gets a little flat there. Do not think that this is a circle though, because it's not a circle. It's definitely a limosome. It has a little flat spot there, okay? So for this one, negative cosine, so negative x-axis, two plus one units, so three units, side to side two, And then two is bigger than one, so outside the pole, one unit. And I think this will have a dimple because of that short. The, the further away from the pole you are relatively, okay, there, and there is a, there is, I forget what it is, but there's a way to tell. I know you, I know you learned it in pre-cal. There's a way to tell from looking at these numbers if there's gonna be a dimple or not. But like I said, I don't know because we don't really care in our class. Well, it looks like it just got flat again, doesn't it? Anyway, like I said, that's all good. So negative sine, so negative y-axis, five units, side to side three, outside the pole one. Nice and plump. Don't be skinny, okay? Negative cosine, so negative x-axis, eight units, Side to side, five units. Outside the pole, two units. Nice and plump. Okay, so be able to whip those out. Um, I always think it's interesting to see what would happen, what would happen to one of these, one of these if we had a number in front of theta. These again, this is the kind that um, you do not have to know, all right? But I think it's interesting for you to, to just be more familiar with these graphs, um, just in general, just what, what might happen. So if you do put a number in front of this theta, it completely changes it. But the three is bigger than the two still, Three is bigger than two, so you still don't go on the pole. It's not on the pole anymore, okay? It just goes outside the pole. So, and that's not just because of the way, I mean, that's the way it's supposed to be. It stops short of going through the pole. Isn't that funny? I love that. I kind of like that. Anyway, I'm sure there's a whole, whole lot more that we can do with polars than what we do in pre-cal and calculus. But I never did have a class, even in my upper math classes, where we did much more with polars. Okay, the second type of limosome is a limosome with a loop. So again, with if A is little or littler than B, then you have a little loop, okay? Lamosomes with loops always go through the pole or the origin, okay? Complete graph zero to two pi. So two plus three sine, my first thought is positive sine. So up on the positive y-axis, five units. Side to side two. My, and how, how far in to get the little loop? How far in should the little loop be? Subtract these. That's how long that's how long your little loop is. Through the pole and your little loop. Okay? All right. So right here, positive sign. So positive y axis, four units. Okay? Side to side one. 
through the little through the it, a is littler than b so you will have a little loop so through the origin and then the the little loop the inner loop will be two units long so we'll have nice and plump ooh i didn't make that side nice and plump oh my gosh oh my goodness oh my goodness i kind of butchered that anyway Hopefully you did better than I did on that one. Usually I do better. Something like that. Okay? It's hard when they're tiny, when I have a little one here. It just kind of makes it hard. Okay. Negative cosine. So negative x-axis. Three units. I'm going to make my units bigger. <laughs> Three units. Side to side, one. Little loop one unit long. So nice and plump and a little loop of length one. That was better. Negative sign, seven units on the negative y-axis. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Side to side two. A is littler than B, so we have a little loop, three units long. So nice and plump. Oops. Something like that. Okay, negative cosine. So negative x-axis. Three plus four is seven. Side to side three. Little loop, one unit long. Nice and plump. Okay. Let's take a look at one of these. Um, which one should I do? Maybe this one here. Um, let's take a look at this. One plus three sine of theta. Okay. Well, mine doesn't look nearly that good, does it? But that's what it looks like. Okay, that's how it graphs it. Okay? So this goes from 0 to 2 pi, right? This whole thing is graphed in 0 to 2 pi. When I say that, here's what I mean by that. Students sometimes, when they see, when they see a graph, they think that everything that's graphed right here has got to be zero to pi over two, and that's not true, because this little piece right here was not graphed from zero to pi over two. If I graph, if I only went from zero to pi over two in my calculator. I would not get any of that little loop because that was formed at the end, right? So you cannot, with polars, you can't just look and say, oh, anything there is 0 to pi over 2. It doesn't work that way with polars, okay? So don't make that misconception. It will hurt you when, you're, when we're doing what we have to do with the calculus and these polars, okay? All right, here are some, a couple of graphs where the theta coefficient was not a 1. So if it's a 5, we get that graph. Isn't that cool? I love that. That was what if it was a cosine. And if it's a sine, look what happened to it. I love it. I think that that's awesome. That's if it's a sine and, an, and a 4 in there. This is a cosine and a five. So anyway, you can play around with that. You get some really interesting looking graphs. Okay, so that is our polar refresher. And what time is it? This is about 54 minutes. So yeah, um, maybe I need to kind of slow it down in the classroom because that didn't take too long. But good stuff, play around with it, get comfortable with it, okay? I need to be able to give you an equation 
and one of these equations and you graph it. Okay, I need to be able to do that with you. So make sure you can do that. Okay, these equations, no, you don't have to know what these look like. Okay, only these four main, uh, the, the, the four that we did in pre calculus. Okay, know that. And know how to make a table and plot on your own and find out like where we start or end, you know, whatever. Okay? Alrighty. And we'll be doing much, much more with these, but that's what you need to take with you into Unit 10 when we get there to these polars. Okay, that's it.